Hello, everyone, and welcome to Real Talk with Elder Michelle. I hope that your week has been blessed and you are ready to get started in the Word of God, that you are as excited as I am tonight about this broadcast. I pray that, that we will have a glorious time um, just talking about the Word of God, rightly dividing the Word of God, and uh, just enjoying ourselves. So I want you to go ahead, get your Bibles, get your um, pens, your paper, your pencils, whatever you need, and get your Bibles and turn to Exodus, the fourth chapter, starting at the first verse. And we'll be ready to get started right after this commercial break. Once we have finished this commercial break, we're going to really get started to tell you tonight. I, um, before the commercial, anyone that wants to bless um, this broadcast, please, please make sure that you follow and you like my page, uh, uh, Real Talk with Elder Michelle. Just send me um, a request. If you have not been invited to uh, like the show, just send me a friend request at Real Talk with Elder Michelle. I um, also want to say that if you should have something that you need prayer about, you just want someone to pray for you, please feel free to send me um, a private email. You can either message me in Messenger on Facebook, or you can send your prayer request to elderemh at yahoo.com. That's E L D E R. E M H at yahoo.com. And um, just let me know what you are standing in need of prayer for so that I can um, lift you up in prayer. Uh, prayer is a powerful tool and it never hurts to have more than one person praying for you. So please feel free to do that. And then go to YouTube on the YouTube channel and put in Endure Entertainment. And I want you to go over, like the page, ding the bell so that you are um, showing that you like it, and then follow Endure Entertainment on YouTube. Uh, we are trying to get the word worldwide. We want to get the word out in so many different ways. And this is how you can help us. So please make sure you go there. And right now, just enjoy um, our commercial break, and I'll be back and ready to go uh, with the subject tonight, Use What You Got. So make sure. Hello, 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 hello. Good day to each of you. My name is Madam Falana. I am the CEO and founder of Endure Entertainment. We are the home of clean entertainment with one vision, one goal to inspire. When you think of clean entertainment, think of Endure Entertainment. When you think of Endure Entertainment, think of clean entertainment. We have several television talk shows on our lineup. Bonafide Talk will be spearheaded by Del Jean Haynes Carter, The Michelle Jackson Show with Michelle Jackson, Thomas Ministries with Evangelist Corey Thomas, Real Talk with Elder Michelle with Elder Michelle Hinton. I've got favor with Prophetess T with Prophetess T Freeman, and Jeanette Speaks with Anjanette Wilson. Go ahead and guys and get every last one of your connected devices. We at Endure Entertainment Television Network are syndicated on so many different podcast directories. We don't want you to miss out. So go ahead and get all of your connected devices and start downloading these apps so that you can continue to listen to our amazing shows on the go. In addition to the board of directors, we have a team of business professionals, business administrators, graphic designers, spiritual counselors, and more. If anyone is in need of a website, a video ad, 
someone to talk to of a spiritual nature, feel free to reach out to Endure Entertainment. We actually care about you, you, and you. Endure Entertainment, we are the home of clean entertainment with one vision, one goal, to inspire. When you think of clean entertainment, think of Endure Entertainment. When you think of Endure Entertainment, think of clean entertainment of all genres, guys. In addition to the many podcast directories that our television shows are syndicated on, you can actually listen to all of our shows live at bftm.live. That's bftm.live. Of course, you can view the archives and see our shows live on our Facebook page, Endure Entertainment, our archives and our live shows on YouTube, on the Endure Entertainment YouTube channel. Again, I am Falana Milburn, aka Madam Falana, and Jeanette Wilson is one of our amazing executives. Dale Jean Haynes Carter is another amazing executive. And of course, Myra Wilson Jackson is our CFO and our literary output coordinator. Guys, we are Endure Entertainment, the home of clean entertainment with one vision, one goal to inspire. Okay, everybody, I hope that you are ready to get into the word of God as I am. Amen. And I I pray that you will um, make sure to follow those um, things that were mentioned in our commercial. Uh, Please, please go to YouTube and make sure that you follow um, Endure Entertainment. Amen. We are trying to do something different and something wonderful for the people to bring out a word, uh, to get it out to each and every person. And the wonderful thing about us is that uh, we are such um, diverse, different people. Um, You have a diversity. It's good to see you, Sister Butler. Amen. Um, Such a diverse uh, amount of personalities that are going to be um uh that are part of this show uh, good evening sister stevens good to see you amen and so um this is one of the reasons why i um i really believe that indoor entertainment is such a wonderful um production uh company because of the diversity among each of us we all bring something different to the table but at the same time, we're uh, doing it all for the glory of the Lord. None of us seek our own fame. We want to simply bring the word of God according to the way he has given it to us. Amen. So let us get started. As I said tonight, we are in Exodus. We are in the fourth chapter. And we're going to be reading from the first through the fifth verses. And then we're going to talk about it. But I'm going to do a little uh, adding because of the fact of what we're talking about tonight and our topic. Uh, It says, and Moses answered and said, but behold, they will not believe me nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, the Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, what is that in thine hand? And he said, a rod. And he said, cast it on the ground. And he cast it on the ground and it became a serpent and Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it and it became a rod in his hand. That they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, 
the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob hath appeared unto thee. Now this scripture was for him to tell, oh, sorry, that is Exodus, the fourth chapter, verses one through five. And our subject tonight is use what you got. Amen. Amen. Okay. So Exodus 4th chapter 1 through 5. Now, when we get to this, this is when Moses, of course, is having that um, time of self-doubt. Welcome, Sister Stevens. Um, that self-doubt about whether or not he was called. Then um, we, we, he starts off with that. He's doubting his calling. And now he's doubting the Lord. The Lord then told him what he's going to do and how he's going to bring it about. But Moses isn't sure. And we do the same. The Lord tells us to go do something. First, we doubt him that he calling us. As I said, many preachers I said this the other night. Many preachers are like that. We doubt our calling. We're like, no, it ain't me. I know you ain't calling me, Lord. Because <laughs> we'll doubt it. But then we come to that. But then we hit bumps in the road. And I want people to understand that the Lord knows that we will hit places in our journey where we, not, we might be like, Lord, are you with me? Lord, are you with me? Um, and we might need the mantle to be wet and then dry, uh, also to prove that he's with us. And this was Moses. Moses is like, now we got to remember the background on Moses. See, sometimes we talk about polar Moses, but you got to remember Moses was going into a place that he knew that he had killed an Egyptian. And Moses was still a little scared that his past was going to be brought up. You know how we do in the church. We come in and sometimes we sit down and we will not do the work that the Lord has for us or wants us to do simply because we are so scared somebody going to walk in from our past. But here's the thing. You got to remember that your past is just that, the past. It is nothing to do with your future. It has nothing to do with what God has called you to. But we do. And this was what Moses was dealing with. But here we see and we come. Moses has to get an assurance. God has given him an assurance to use what he has. This is what you got in your hand, boy. Sometimes the Lord is like, so what you got there? What you got there? You use that right there. You can use it to run off the lip, chit chat, laugh, and joke about. So what you got there and why you ain't using it? You got a mouth. You can open it and I'll speak for you. You got eyes to see. You got hands to clap. You got a mind and you can think. You got legs to walk. Baby, you got stuff that you can use. But you too scared of your past. Jesus wants you to know that you got to use what you got. When Jesus came, he had a specific amount of blessings with him. He used what he had. Many a times we see things that Jesus did in the Bible. He used what was at hand. When he healed the man that was blind, he spat on the ground and made clay. And then he put the clay on the man's eyes, told the man, go wash in the pool of Siloam. He didn't go and wave his hands and do some outrageous magical things. He used what was at hand. I tell you, we're gonna get there. I don't wanna, I don't wanna jump ahead of myself. I get excited sometimes. And I was getting ready to jump to something, but it's like, no, that's that's coming. So we know that on many occasions throughout the, um, the use uh, of Moses, 
that he used the rod in Mosaic. And we know that his first thing was took it through, uh, told Aaron, put his uh, rod down, uh, and it turned into a serpent. The sorcerers made serpents. Did they did the same to prove it ain't God, but then God, because Aaron's rod as a serpent swallowed up theirs, and then he told Aaron pick it up, and when Aaron picked it up, it turned back into a staff or a rod. We know that when it came time for him to start doing the plates, he told Moses. He said. Uh, uh, wave the rod over the waters and he turned. He made the waters turn to blood. When he told him that he was going to bring the frogs he waved them and the frogs took over. Told Aaron take the rod. Yeah because it was sometimes Aaron. Told Aaron take the rod and hit the uh, tap the earth. He tapped the earth. That's where the lice came. So it was always using what he had. He never went off and got elaborate things. We want to, sometimes we, we get into um, thinking that it's got to be something elaborate to use for the blessing. Sometimes it's as simple as a pen. Putting your name by the X. And that's enough for the blessing. Sometimes he uses the Bible yeah, uh-huh. I know you're saying to yourself, well, wait, don't we use the word all the time? Not always, because sometimes we don't want to. Sometimes we use other things. Sometimes he used people, but sometimes he just take the holy word and bring it to your remembrance. And when he brings it to your remembrance, it does something for you. It will break a loose chains. It will tear things all all to see your sister Rosico. I pray for your husband. Man, we still lifting you both up in prayer. Um, sometimes we want God to perform great miracles. We want Red Sea miracles. But let me tell you, even at the Red Sea, he used what he had. The Lord says, stretch out your hand. And when he did, the Lord started blowing and he parted the Red Sea, and then he blew on it so that they went across on dry land. And when they all came across, the Lord didn't turn the waters loose until Moses used what he had. He said, now take it and wave it across. And he waved the rock and the waters returned and came in on top of Pharaoh. You got to use what you got. See, you got power and you don't know how to use it yet because you have not tapped into the key to the power. You say, other hint, now I want to know about this. You're talking about first of all, you have power because when Jesus got up, as I say many times, he got up with all power in heaven and in earth given unto him and if you are in him you know remember he stood he knocked at the door any man open come in and sup with you fellowship with you that means he'll come into your heart because that's the door that he's knocking on and if you open up the door to your heart he'll come in and then he's in you and you are in him so if I'm in him and he's in me and he's all powerful, then that tells me, hmm, I got power. He then told me, I got power in the tongue to speak life and death. Hmm, that means I need to learn how to use what I got. There was a song that said that was called "You Got to Use What You Got," and the the, uh, the first parts of that song said, um, "You may feel like you ain't got a lot, but go ahead and use what you got, cause what you got is a lot." And in Christ, 
this is what you need to understand. It doesn't matter if it seems like you on your own. You got five, you, you got an army surrounding you. When you are using what you got, when you call on the name of Jesus, when you use your mouth to speak life to blessings and death to curses, then your enemies that have encamped around about you look at you again and where they thought that it was you by yourself, they see a whole army and host of angels standing behind you. And they looking at you going, well, wait, I wait a minute. Where did all these people come from? Won't she by herself? Yeah, see, that's what God does for his children. He will provide when we start using what we got. You have not only the power of life and death in the tongue, but you also have the power of prayer. Let me tell you about prayer. Prayer can change the hearts of man. You say, Elder Hint, I don't know about that. Let me tell you how he can change the hearts of man. I was sitting there trying to figure out what I was going to do. Y'all know I can get, I can tell me. I can't tell nobody else's, but I can tell mine. And I was sitting there and I was trying to figure out. I was like, now, I, I'm raising my two older nephews. I got a son of my own. I'm on the income coming in this house. And I don't know what we're going to do. And at that time, it was very hard if you had already got an extension to get another extension. And something happened. I won't go into a whole lot of details, but let's just say somebody walked in and walked out with the money that I had for the bill. So I'm sitting here and I'm like, how am I going to keep lights on for these children? It's in the middle of winter. And it's cold. I don't have anybody I can go borrow money from. My mother's on disability. She done paid her bills. I can't go get her money. I can't borrow from this person. I can't borrow from that one. So, Lord, what am I going to do? But and I understood how to use what I got. I knew how to use my knees so that they could bend. And when they bend, I knew how to go down on them. Not only that, I knew how to lay my head down on my bed, arms stretched out. I knew how to use what I got. And then I knew that I had one other thing that was very powerful, and that was the power of prayer. And my faith was firmly in place. So I began to pray, and I said, Lord, only you can do this. I need an extension or I need the money. And here's how powerful prayer is, baby. I got the extension and the money too because they gave me the extension. And then I turned around and went to my post office box and there sat a check that I won't expect and didn't know about that done showed up in my name. So I won't use in something that won't mind. It came to me. I didn't know where it came from, except for that the Lord had blessed me. So I blessed him, went right on back down there and told him, I don't need that extension because my God is a way maker. And I paid the bill. Walked back to the house. Walked in there and looked at the people that I had helped. Because see, it was one of the ones that I had helped that stole the money and i told him i said let me tell you something if you don't put the money back by the ending of this week you just stole your blessing because god is getting ready to move in this house and honey let me tell you something people that didn't go to church looked at me and said i ain't had nothing to do with it but I'm sure going to give you some because I know that you is a true child of God. And if he done said 
that we still in our blessing, then whoever stole it, I suggest you give it back. But I'm going to give her some so I can get a portion. And they did. And it was a wonderful thing because the one that did take it, they paid the consequences. I told you, you reap whatever you sow. And they reap the consequences. And the one that spoke out and said that I know that she's a true woman of God, that person got blessed. What they gave me, God blessed them. They came back to tell me, look, now you know what? Here, take this. And carried the church for tithing. Because the Lord didn't bless me. Because I blessed you. And you proved that Jesus is real. Honey, let me tell you something. When we learn the power of prayer. And we start using it. We will see that God can make things move in our lives. Better than we ever thought they could. You will see that things will change. For the better in your life, you will find yourself walking into miracle after miracle after miracle. But let me tell you something. With the power of prayer, amen, Jesus is real. With the power of prayer, you must have the sincerity of faith. What do I mean by that? It's got to be real. You cannot say, I have faith in the Lord. And know that you really don't trust him. When you have sincerity of faith, then the power in your prayer is something that goes beyond. That's when you can do the things that you saw in the Bible. See, we, the Lord, Jesus has told us, I, I get so caught up sometimes about this, trying to get this over. Jesus has already told you what to do and how to get there. The problem is we don't listen and pay attention. He says, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man comes to the father except for by me. In that one little bit of scripture, he gave you the answer. You wondering how, what must I do? Use what you got. This is what you got. You have the holy word. You got the plumb line. He gave you the answers. They all up in him. The question is, will you go into this book and find it? Now, what? okay, let me go back because I told you, I said in that little bit of scripture, he gave you the answer. You say, Elder Hinton, tell me where is that answer? And I'm glad you asked that question. Let me tell you. I am the way. If you are lost and you are trying to find the way, he's the way. All you got to do is call on him. If you've been wandering in the wilderness for 40 years, call on the Lord and he'll open up the, the pathway so that you can see a direct line to safety. Amen. It's a slow process, but keep praying. Then he says, I don't know what, the truth. Only when we admit the truth can we be real, true, do some real talk with the Lord. Real talk with the Lord is being straight up. It's being honest. It's being real. It's being truthful. Truthfully, sometimes we have to admit to ourselves, I am mean or I am nasty towards some people. I'm not where I should be. Lord, I need your direction. See, we got to be truthful with the Lord and with ourselves. One of the biggest problems that we have as the church is that we lie to ourselves. You say, Elder Hinton, what do you mean we lie? Because we sit there and say, oh, holy, holy, holy. Lord God Almighty, early in the morning, a song shall rise to thee. And we say we believe it. We believe that God is the Holy One of Israel, the ancient one of days. We believe that he's our Jehovah Jireh. But you don't believe that he provides for you.
because you sit back and say, oh, it's good to see you, Sister Cruz. You sit back and you say, Lord, when you going to give me this? Lord, when I'm going to get out of this situation? Lord, Lord, you ain't going to never. So you ain't really being that you really believe. So there's no sincerity in your faith because you're not truly believing in God and believing God. See, there is two ways. You can believe in him, but not believe him. And what do you mean, other hand? I'm going to tell you. You can believe that Jesus is real, but you don't believe him that he's going to do what he said because you get to doubting him when he doesn't move when you think he should now i'm not finished i'm, I'm giving you the answer to everything amen yes sister stevens god has his own time and his own time is always on time amen his own time is always on time it's right when you need it see you know sometimes i like to believe that you know we we get carried away when he doesn't move when we won't but if god moved exactly when we won't sometimes we would get lost we would be lost because our belief system would be that i can do this call on him and he'll move sometimes those things take time to be formed correctly because anything that God does is complete. He doesn't give us half. He gives us whole. When we come before him and ask for certain things, understand he's not going to give you half a fruit. He's going to give you the whole fruit and it's going to be ripe and it's going to be ready and it's going to be perfect. When we ask for blessings, in our lives, those blessings take sometimes they have to be formed because he's got to create a miracle just for you. Yeah, I know you didn't know that. Sometimes he forms miracles just to meet your need because you are so faithful and true in your belief that he'll form a miracle just to make it come true. We got to start learning these things. Then it says he is the life. He said, I come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. If you want to live, then you need to find the way and then walk in it and in truth. And then you'll get life everlasting because that's the only way that you'll get to the father is if you come by the son. And if you come by the son and use what you got, you can get where you're trying to get to. All of us is trying to make it in. But the only way to make it in is to start using what God has equipped you with to be victorious. You say, well, what does he equip me with? All right, let's walk with it. What has he equipped you with? He has equipped you with knowledge and understanding that if you walk in the admonition of the faith of God, if you walk with your faith and you believe and never doubt in him, then you can and you will make it in. He is giving you the ability to rightly divide the word of God, that's a that is a weapon that you have. Now, you say, uh, Elder Hinton, I need to know some stuff. All right, then I'm going to get there. I want to get you to some places. I'm pulling up some scriptures for you um, uh, that I want you to understand um, why. You got to start learning how to use other things. Uh, this one is a more teaching one tonight. Okay, so if you go to 2 Corinthians uh, 10 and 4, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, 
but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, we have to learn how to put on the whole armor of God. We've got to learn how to trust in the fact that the war that we, the weapons that we use, they're not they're not those carnal things. They're not a sword and a knife. But we got fight with what we got. Okay, let me tell you. They use their mouths as the enemy. They use their mouths to tear down. We use our mouths to build up. They use their mouths to slander. We use our mouths to glorify. They use their mouths to lie. We use our mouths to tell the truth. They use their mouths to turn one against the other. We use our mouths to bring unity. They use their mouths to bring dissension in the church. We use our mouths to bring fellowship in the church. They use their mouths to put evil thoughts into the heart of man. We use our mouths to put the word of God into the hearts of man. See, this is using what we got. God gave us a mouth so that we can speak. And we know how to speak truths just as they know how to speak lies. When we give our hearts over to God, when we give over everything to the Lord, and allows him to use everything that we have. He's using what he got. See, this is the thing that you need to understand. That you are something that Jesus has. If you are a child of God, he's using what he got. When he uses you to speak the word. The word of truth that he uses me for. That's using what he's got when he uses one that has been blessed to sing like a nightingale he's using what he's got and we got to start learning to use what we got you might have one talent and you might think that what you got is not a lot but i tell you tonight go ahead and use what you got use the one that one talent because the one talent that you have might be meant to bring 10,000 to Christ. Use what you got so that you can be victorious. When you know how to pray and the enemy comes against you, you know how to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thine will be done in earth as it is in heaven. See, when you know how to say that prayer, you know how to, first of all, use it with power. Because when you look at the enemy that's coming at you, you know how to tell him, first of all, I got a father. He is in heaven. His name is hallowed. And this thing is his kingdom. And his kingdom is coming. Uh -huh. His will will be done. It's going to be done in the earth as it is done in the heavens. So whenever I speak life to a blessing, whatever I loose on earth, he'll loose it in the heavens. Whatever I bind on the earth, he'll bind it in the heavens. If I bind the curse, then he'll bind the curse in the heaven. If I loose the blessings in my life, He'll loose blessings all up in the heavens. See, we got to start learning to use what we got because it might not seem like it's a lot, but use what you got anyway because what you got is a lot. You say, what do I have? I'm going to tell you what you got in a few minutes. Uh, just let me keep going. I'm going to explain what you got. See, Moses didn't know exactly what he had but he went ahead and he kept using the rod 
He kept right on. The rod was used to bring the water from the rock. The rod was used to get their freedom. The rod was used to bring the curses on Egypt. The rod was used to separate Goshen from the Pharaoh's people so that the children of Israel never had to fear any of the plagues. He had to learn to use what he got. He didn't want to talk because he said that he had a stutter. But God said, look here what you got. You got your brother Aaron, and that boy is he is learned. That boy is educated. That boy speaks eloquently. So use what you got. Let your brother speak the words. I want you to just be my messenger. You got to use what you got. Joshua didn't think that he would be able to take over, but he had to use what he got. He sent those men over to spy it out. And then the two that came back and told him the truth, he went ahead and used what he had. Daniel, he didn't have a lot, but Daniel used what he had. What did he have? He had faith bigger than mountains. He had faith to believe that you could throw me in the lion's den, but that would be all right because I got faith to believe that God will close the lion's mouth. Three boys, those Hebrew boys, Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego, they had to use what they had. What they had was faith, faith to believe. They even told Nebuchadnezzar, we are not careful to answer you. Because here's the thing, if he don't, it's not because he can't. But I'm going to believe that he's going to keep us. He had, they, these three boys had enough faith that Jesus came and walked in the furnace with them to the point that Nebuchadnezzar had to say, then we throw in three. Yeah, we threw in three. Then why do I see four? And the fourth one looking like the son of God. Huh? This is what faith can do when you use what you got. I see my Lord and Savior using, using a whale just to teach a woman from Samaria how to become a saved child. He used water to tell her from this physical water, I got some living water that you ought to be asking me for. It's some living water that I'll put a stream inside of you, a well that will never run dry. He used water just to teach. I see my Jesus using what he got. He looked at the people, said, I got a life, and I'll use this life to save your souls. I'm going to use what I got. To I got the power to lay down my life. I got the power to pick it up again. Jesus, our Lord, my Savior, our Redeemer, used what he got. He knew that he had the power of the Father resting in him because he said, I am in my Father and my Father is in me. Do you believe? that you have not seen the Father, because if you've seen me, then you've seen the Father. He told, he had to tell, oh Pontius Pilate, honey child, you don't have power over my life unless I give it to you. See, Jesus had to use what he got. He didn't come in on some big old black Stallion. He came in with a triumphant entry, entry on the day of Palm Sunday, riding on a mule. He didn't have to go get other things. He just used what he got. Let me tell you what you got. 
if you got faith, you've got Jesus. And that's enough for you to make it to the other side. If you got Jesus and you have faith, you have victory over the enemy. You got victory over death. You got victory over the curses that people have put on your life. If you trust in God, use what you got. Use your faith so that it will keep you. It will guide you. It'll take you on so that you will have life and have it more abundantly. This is what you got if you're trusting in God. You've now got liberty. If you got God, you now have freedom. If you got Jesus, you now have the way, the truth, and the life. You can get to the Father because you're going by the Son. If you have Jesus, use what you got. Use him to overcome. He said, don't worry about this world because I, have overcome the world. And if I've overcome the world, you are victorious if you are in me and I am in you. See, I'm trying to tell you something. You got to learn to use what you got. Stop worrying about whether or not you are in need of this type of blessing or that type of blessing or if to win the fight, I got to fight dirty. You don't have to fight dirty because first of all, he says, stand still. This battle is not yours. Stand still and watch today as I get victory. I'm paraphrasing preachers, ministers, uh, Bible scholars. Okay. He was letting you know that if you trust in him, hello, uh, brother, uh, Amen. What was I? Uh, excuse me. Uh, I didn't see that. I'm I'm so sorry. I got my degree from uh, the Goldsboro Disciple Institute. Amen. I have a bachelor's in uh, science, a bachelor's in theology, uh, biblical studies, and my education. I also have degrees from out of. Um, Oh, Lord. Hillsdale College. I have a degree in theology. Amen. And a degree that I've uh, re recently received uh, from Hillsdale College. Amen. I'm going to get back. I see a, a question, so I have to answer. I like uh, sometimes people need for you to tell them your credentials. And so I also have a degree um, on the book of uh, David, the story of David from his rise to his fall. Amen. Okay. So that uh we have to learn how to rightly divide the word of God. And that comes by going in to the Bible using what you got. Jesus left us a blueprint on how to make it in. He left us a blueprint on what to do. This is boot camp this is so thank you bless you uh brother yelverton and to god be all the glory for what he gives us amen we have to learn how to go into our bible and study and learn to read the bible and see that he's telling you how to make it he gives you the answers it's in the scriptures. When my enemies, even my foes, came up against me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Whom, Lord, is my light and my salvation? Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the light of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? What does that scripture teach you? It teaches you that you should not Fear anything, because God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and a sound mind. So it teaches you that not allow the devil, the enemy, to fool you into being afraid, 
into believing that you can be defeated because he says, even my enemies, the word tells me they stumbled and failed. The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof and they that dwell therein. That tells me that I am the Lord's and everything here belongs to him. And with everything belonging to him, then that means that nothing that I ask of him shall be denied me as long as I have faith to believe and never doubt. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man open, I will come in and sup with him. What does that tell you? That he is always right there waiting on you to accept him. And when you accept him, he'll come in. Submit yourselves, therefore, unto the Lord and resist the devil and he will flee from you. This is to teach you how to make the enemy go away. I'm trying to tell you, scripture teaches you. Create in me a clean heart. Renew the right spirit within. Be ye transformed. Be ye not conformed to this world, but be, let your mind, I'm paraphrasing, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. What does that mean? Come to the Lord. Don't conform to the things of this world. Instead, transform by the renewing of your mind through the word of God. Mm. Against thee and thee only have I sinned. That means that uh, you tell the Lord, I know it was against you. I can't sin against man because they sin. They born in sin and shaped in iniquity. Only you are righteous and that's the one that I sinned against. So I'm asking you. Lord, hear my cry. Attend unto my voice. That means, Lord, I'm calling on your name. Please answer me. Thou hast delivered me from the lowest hell. See, I'm spouting word. This is word. And I'm telling you, direct you. Deliver me from the lowest hell. That is to tell you that when you think that you're too dirty for God, he can go way down and pick you up. Lord, when my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. That is telling you that when you feel like you not make it. When you feel like you cannot make it. When you feel like you cannot go any further. When you feel like you can't do anything else and you can't make change. Then you need to go to the Lord. And go to the rock that is higher than you. Go to Jesus. Trust in the Lord. This is what we need to learn to do. Amen. We must learn to give God our best by using what we got. And that is our faith. Trust in him. Believe in him. And he will guide you to that other side. He will help you. All we do is trust. All we have to do is believe in him. All we got to do is use what you got. Bless and keep us, dear my Father. And Lord, Right now, I see enemy attempting to attack, but I rebuke him in the name of God. See, I don't allow the enemy to infiltrate the word of God. I do not allow the enemy to have place anywhere. So make sure to understand that I'm never going to give the devil any due. So be done and be gone. Submit yourself. Here's the thing. I just told you one of the ways. So I don't know why the devil thought he would try me because I just said, 
submit yourselves unto the Lord. Resist the devil. And he has to say, bye-bye. Because if the devil attacks, resist him. Submit to the Lord. He can't do nothing but go. Because in the midst of the Lord, he cannot stand. So trust God and use what you got. Pray unto the Lord. And never doubt. And God will see you through. I pray that this was a blessing to someone. I pray that it gave you some encouragement. I pray that it gave you something to help you as you go forth. Be blessed. And remember, God's got everything under control, even the day will be blessed. And I'll see you next time. Amen. Six o'clock, Endure Entertainment, BFTM.live. Come on and go to YouTube and like Endure Entertainment. Click the bell and then follow us. Amen.